Okay, so now we'll talk about the third postulate, which relates um, the physical properties and, and measurements that we make on quantum systems to Hermitian operators. It, the, the third postulate says that every physical pros, uh, property is associated with a Hermitian operator, and that Hermitian operator operates on the space of states. Naturally, since we have Hermitian operators, there will also be a matrix representation um, of that Hermitian operator. Um, but at this point, again, we're looking at this as a general operator that operates on the on the vector space of state uh, on the vector space of um, physical states. So, um, if we since these operators are Hermitian, we can actually write them um, through their uh, spectral decomposition. Um, that's something I've talked about in a previous video. So we can um, write projection operators onto the eigenvectors. So this um, cat n bra n is a projection operator that projects the the physical or the quantum the, the state of the system onto the eigenvectors n, and so we can decompose our Hermitian operator into a sum of these projection operators multiplied with the eigenvalues. So, if now phi or state that we're measuring is one of the eigenstates, then the value of the physical property will be measured as that, um, that eigenvalue with a probability of, a, of one or with you know 100% of the time. Um, if phi is not an eigenstate of, uh, um, of the, the uh, physical property operator that we want to measure, then uh, there's going to be a probability of finding that state phi in, in the eigenstate n that is associated with the, um, the observable or the, with the, the physical property A that is given by um, the probability amplitude modulus squared uh, as, as described by, um, by postulate 2. So the probability of finding state phi in eigenstate n is equal to the scalar product of n and phi modulus squared. So um, if we were to repeat this measurement many times based on you know identically prepared states phi, um, we can talk about probabilities in, an, uh, in a frequentist um, approach, then there's going to be an expectation value for the physical property, which in, in the frequentist um, approach to the st statistics is, corresponds to the mean value. So that um, expectation value will be equal to the probability of finding I, or, or measuring an eigenstate n times the, um, the value or the, the eigenvalue of n. And so that will be our uh, uh, modulus squared of uh, um, the, the um, probability of finding a state phi in eigenstate n multiplied with the eigenvalue. So if we then um, take uh, write this modulus squared as a uh, scalar product and a uh, um, scalar product complex conjugate, um, we can see that we have here a uh, completeness relation with the sum over n with uh, um, the, the, uh, the cat of n and the bra of n. And so we can remove that completeness relation to end up with just a matrix element um, of this uh, matrix A of the operator A between states phi and phi. Okay, so that's going to be the, eigen, uh, the, the expectation value of the operator A for the state phi. Okay, um, and we've we've done this expression here. We've we've written this without or, or assuming that all of the eigenvalues um, of A, all the eigenvalues uh, labeled by n here are different and have uh, and, and so all of the eigenvalues are degenerate uh, are, uh, are are not degenerate. But even if there are degenerate eigenvalues, with a bit more care in this notation, we could uh, we could come up with the same um, examples. So let's look at a particular example. This is the, um, the most fundamental um, operator that we can think of, and that's the one that projects um, a state on, um, on an eigen or on a particular state n. So our projection operator on the state n is going to be given by our ket n bra n um, outer product. And so that operator um, is, is one of the Hermitian operators that will give us um, a measurement. So now if we uh, were to take a state phi and um, measure through this operator um, that state phi, then we'd find uh, um, exactly what we're looking for, which is namely the um, probability 
amplitude squared um, of, uh, of, of um, n with, uh, with phi. The other thing we need to introduce here are what are called ideal measurements. Um, so if you want to talk about uh, things like frequentist approaches, um, then we have to talk about ideal measurements. Those are measurements in which the system itself is not destroyed by the measurement. So um, let's uh, um, contrast in, in that sense, for example, the, um, the Stern-Gerlach experiment we've talked about. So we can uh, separate the spin up and spin down states in, through a, a, a magnetic field that's oriented in the z direction with the gradient. Um, so that's one way in which we can separate those two states. What, we're, what we've basically done is um, measure the z component of the, of the spin um, in each of those two cases without destroying the measurement. Okay? Um, there's of course other ways in which we can make uh, measurements if we want to detect one of those, um, those, those silver atoms that went, for example, uh, in, in one direction that had one particular um, spin state, then we have to uh, have that silver atom interact with a screen and light up or interact with a photomultiplier tube or something like that. Now, that's a, that's a case in which the measurement actually destroys the physical system. So that would not be an ideal measurement. So in the case of ideal measurements, we're talking about measurements that do not destroy the quantum system. Um, and that will be important as, um, as a prerequisite before we talk about postulate 4 in the next video.